In one of my last tutorials, I talked about different ways to handle communication between components in Godot. I wanted to show that there can be several solutions to the same problem and how we can gradually move from simple to more complex solutions. And just as I had hoped, there were also a bunch of people who wrote their personal favorite solutions in the comments. This inspired me to finally decide what approach I'm going to be using for my own current project. Hi, and welcome to another devlog for Hecla the Witch, a cute little Zelda-like I'm developing with my daughters. The game follows Hecla, who wants to be a witch. However, most people around her don't really believe in magic and just thinks she's a silly little girl who spends way too much time in her Halloween costume. In the game, Hector sets out on a quest to find the magical items that will grant her access to a magical school she just knows exists. She's sure of it. So I wanted to add a state system to my player class, and this should help me keep track of what state the player is in and what happens in the different states. At the moment, I just have four states for the player. Idle, walking, attack, and death. The player can also be in an immune state, but this can be active in three of the four states. So for now, I'll just keep tracking this with a boolean. But it is of course also possible to have multiple state machines for the same game object. What I wanted now was to have a script for each state instead of handling all the states in one script using a bunch of booleans. So I first created a base script for the states and then a simple state machine script that will keep track of what the current state is and change the current state on request. And this is then when I started to wonder what the best way to handle communication between components would be. Immediately, I could see that only connecting the components manually through the editor would be a problem. For some of the states, there will be components that should be disabled. We could do this by not having their signals connected, or by disabling them some other way. What I tried to do earlier was to add a disable and enable method to the components that needed this, and then also connect these to the necessary signals from other components. An example would be that the diet signal from the health component could be connected to the other component's disable method. This is one way to handle states, but for me it gets too abstract and it can be difficult to figure out what exactly goes on when and where. Which is why I now wanted to move on to a more standard state system with a state machine and a script for each state. I then decided to try one of the solutions that were mentioned in the comments for my tutorial on the problem. What if the component signals were connected in the player's base script? Translated into my states, the idea was then that each state would have a begin method where it should connect the signals and components it needed to be connected, and then also connect signals to methods unique to that state. To make sure that the signals that a state would connect would also be disconnected when the state ends, I made a method in the state base class that connects a signal to a method and also adds the signal and the connected method to a dictionary, so all the connections can easily be disabled again when the state ends. All this led to a functional game, but with a lot of signals being connected and disconnected all the time. And while this worked fine, I just did not like it. I still felt that it was too abstract and it did not give me the clear overview of each state that I wanted. And I didn't like that a bunch of signals could end up being connected and disconnected all the time. It just felt wrong to me. 
but please let me know in the comments what you think of this solution. Another solution could have used the disable and enable approach I mentioned earlier, and then each state would have to enable and disable the components it needed or didn't need. I didn't even try this solution because, again, it just felt like it wasn't the correct solution for me. And this is where I was stuck. I did have a vague idea of what I could do instead, but I needed a long walk before I finally decided to jump in and try it out. The main thing that was holding me back was this idea that the components absolutely had to be connected directly to each other. It kept ending up with solutions that felt too abstract and wrong to me. I wanted to be able to open up a state script and easily understand what was happening within that state. For some, the solution I ended up with might feel just as clear as the previous one. But to me, it made all the difference. I decided to focus on the signal up, call down practice. All components are children of the player's root node, so it's perfectly fine to call component methods directly from the player script. And the player state scripts are really just an extension of the player script. So I think that calling methods of a component is also perfectly fine to do from a state script. Instead of connecting and disconnecting signals in the beginning and end of each state, I then decided to connect all the signals from the components directly to their own method in the player script. Each of these new methods will then get the current state behavior from the state machine and call a method on this. The methods are all a part of the base player state script that all other player states will inherit from. Each state can then either use the default behavior from the base script or override the method for a custom behavior. This is also where the components are then used. Instead of calling the components methods through signals, they are now just called directly from the state scripts when required. Like here, where the move and slide component is updated when the velocity is updated in the base player state. But then in the dead state, this method is overridden, so nothing will happen when this method is called while the dead state is active. Now I can quickly get an overview of the default actions in the base player state script and the individual changes in each of the scripts for the specific states. To some, the two solutions I've been through might seem really similar, but for me, the solution I ended up with now just feels so much better. It just fits me and this project so well. However, I would also love to hear what you think of the solutions I thought of and also how you combine states and components in your game. Feel free to provide more insight in the comments so we can all get wiser together. One final thing that I just quickly want to touch upon is using a weight when working with states like this. Here in the attack state, I activate the weapon, start the weapon animation, and then I wait until the attack has ended and then end the state. However, what if something else happens that would end this state before we return after the await here? then we could end up having a call to switch states from an inactive state, which really isn't a good idea. To handle this, I added a boolean in the base class for all the states, to keep track of whether the state is active or not. And then I also added methods for ending or switching states in the same base class. 
Here we can then check that the state is active and only emit signals for switching or ending states if the state that wants to call these are actually active. Finally, I also went to my simple strawberry enemy and converted this to use the same system as the player. Now, this enemy only has two states. It's either alive or dead. So it's fairly simple to set up. But it was also a good way to make another test of the system and see how I liked working with it. I will probably add a few extra enemies soon, just to test it all out a few more times. And that was it for this devlog. Now I'm ready to return to my save system, which is what I originally thought this devlog was going to be about. I've uploaded some of the scripts for the solution I ended up with on Patreon, so they are available for the tiers that usually gets access to the project files for my tutorials. I hope you liked this video, and remember to like, subscribe, hit the bell and all that if you want to see more like this in the future. Bye!